So my name is Russ Harrell. I'm from Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Um, here's a whole lot of things I'm not. I am not an expert on swordfish, redfish, software, GitHub, or any of the other things. <laughs> so, you know, what am I doing here? Um, I'm not sure exactly why they let me do this, but I volunteered to do it because I'm personally excited about trying to bring together a bunch of standards and a bunch of, of technical need, <laughs> meet a bunch of technical needs for disaggregated fabrics and resources, managing the resources over the fabrics. My background is hardware. My background is Superdome class big SMPs and 3D graphics engines. So lots of, lots of horsepower trying to coordinate it. I spent a lot of time working on the systems that managed the big SMP compute engines. So I am also a big fan of animation in the slides keeps me from talking too fast, it keeps me from skipping subjects, and it helps me pace these things. So we're gonna start with a sunfish overview. Redfish, swordfish, and sunfish, oh, why? You know, why do we need all of these different standards, and how are we gonna put them all together? So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about all the three standards, then we're going to talk about the, the agent and the agent communications, how Sunfish as a ultra manager or an aggregator of managed resources communicates with the agents, and we'll explain what these things are, how they link up, and how the conversations uh, go. We are going to have a quick demo of how Sunfish and an agent power up and how Sunfish extracts the inventory for multiple agents, multiple managers, if you will. And then we're gonna talk a bit about some of the simple examples, a simple example that leads to complicated problems that sort of illustrate the value of Sunfish and the work that we're trying to do is to coordinate these multiple standards with multiple managers and how Sunfish is part of the solution for the, some of these problems because I like to solve problems. Oh, for crying out loud. Sorry about that. And then we'll talk a bit about where the Sunfish program is. And then a quick summary and wrap up. All right, so Sunfish overview. So first we're gonna talk briefly about disaggregated infrastructure and composing things out of disaggregated infrastructure. So, Disaggregated infrastructure enables assigning pools of resources to consumers. So you start with disaggregated storage. Everybody in this room knows much more about disaggregated storage and managing disaggregated storage than I do. This is your forte. But we're moving towards disaggregated memory and disaggregated accelerators and we're coming up with new fabrics to manage those things, and it, it becomes obvious that we need a, a way to pull all the different management tools that have cropped up over the years as we've been disaggregating resources. Um, we need a way to take these interconnecting fabrics that are required you disaggregate the storage, you dis disaggregate the memory, and then you have to compose them back together. You have to do that through a fabric. So we've got lots of fabrics involved, InfiniBand, Ethernet, PCI, Fiber Channel, um, 
SAS, there's, there's several. And now we've got disaggregated memory and we need a disaggregated memory fabric. So I got involved in all of this with the beginnings of Gen Z. And we need to avoid having disaggregated management stacks. So um, several, several bullet points on the need to have a bunch of managers. And now we have to shepherd a bunch of management stacks. So Sunfish is designed to provide a framework for wrangling all the different multiple independent management tools and put it behind a single consistent standards-based interface. Now, what's involved in doing that? Well, this is um, a slide I'm gonna go through quickly. I really only wanna point out that Sunfish is a collaboration between the MTF, SNEA, the OFA, and the CXL Consortium to provide elements of the overall solution because you don't just glue these things together, you have to merge them. You have to get things changed in one standard so that it's useful in another standard, or at least you have to agree on the definitions of what these things mean when you start to combine them. So again, Sunfish is designed to configure fabric interconnects, interconnects manage the composable disaggregated resources and we're hoping to make this appropriate to any size fabric. So the objective in visual form, so we start off with hardware, lots of hardware, possibly on several different fabrics, possibly from several different vendors on the same fabric several different hardware managers of those various hardware pieces. You have all of those things and you have a hodgepodge of them. And our goal is to take whatever you have, whatever the vendors are supplying, and run them through a conversion process so they are all speaking redfish to some higher layer management strategy stack. So you'll have a hardware specific agent that is bringing forth the abstracted resources in Redfish models. And then you have the Sunfish service that manages these Redfish models. It aggregates them from the different managers. It maintains a central it might be distributed in, man, in implementation, but it is a one pane of glass view of all the resources that you want to put behind your API. And I, I, I show the infamous redfish bubble diagrams. That one is the one for fabric attached memory um, because that's one of the things that we are working on is how to, how to model fabric available resources. And then you want to present that model of all those resources to the clients that want to use it. And that, that's your applications that want to have direct access to some storage device somewhere or some memory device. That is your orchestrators and your resource managers that divvy those things up and hand them over to the various hosts or, or users. And utilities that um, parse the Sunfish services tree and extract those resources. And one of the things that Sunfish framework is going to do is just define the policies that these agents over here on the right hand side have to follow when they assemble the redfish models so that when you have a utility over on the left hand side that is looking for all of the fabric attached memory on a specific fabric or several fabrics 
the agents have put the model together in a manner that's compliant with the Sunfish um, standards, policies. Here's what this property in the Redfish model for FAM means, so that when you have a utility that goes and looks in that model, it interprets it correctly. So that's one of the major things that Sunfish is gonna do, and it appears on that slide. So this is a more detailed look, and it's specific to multiple managers. So you might have a CXL fabric coming out soon. You might have CXL hardware resources on that fabric. You might have some NVMe over fabrics resources, NVMe hardware, and it's on a different fabric. And you might have a Swordfish appliance that is supplying not only NVMe hardware to one fabric or the other, or maybe a third fabric, but it actually speaks Swordfish API already. So how do we wrangle all these different APIs that the hardware is going to supply and the hardware managers and potentially already a Swordfish interface. So Sunfish services, we define the agents that you would need to put in place to interpret and translate between what your hardware is natively or in your hardware managers are natively communicating with, translate those into Redfish. Once they're translated into Redfish, then you get the Sunfish services that are exporting to these clients on the left-hand side, not visible yet. <laughs> Basically, these are all standardized services and features of Redfish and Swordfish that we want to translate and aggregate and present to the final list of clients. And then the, the final list of clients can be any of those things. And we're, we're gonna talk about, oh, and this, this is just the, the a reaffirma, reaffirmation that the agents are building the Redfish and Swordfish models to be compliant with what Sunfish wants the interpretations of them to be so that the clients on the left-hand side truly understand what they're seeing when they parse the models because we've hidden all the hardware details that we care to from them. So the first thing that we have to do is get the agents and the Sunfish service linked up. And so we have to solve that problem and we want to do it in a standardized way. So we are committing to making Sunfish communications with the agents event-driven. Um, not a big surprise there. The agents are resource aggregators that present Sunfish with a Redfish or Swordfish model of all those resources that they control or that they are modeling. And to the detail level that your agents want to surface to the clients. If there are things that you don't want clients to know about your hardware, you don't put them in the Redfish model. If there are features that your hardware want your clients to be able to access, then you need to put those features in the Redfish model. Sunfish will surface those. So the agents send events to Sunfish to start the, the Sunfish agent interface. So we'll, we're gonna do a demo of this, but the, the agent interrupts Sunfish and says, here you go, I'm here. The agent is going to send Sunfish events when new resources pop up. 
It's going to send sunfish events when health and status changes. And it's going to send sunfish events that are forwarded from the hardware and the um, fabric managers and other managers that the agent sort of represents. So agents <coughs> transfer things to Sunfish. In return, Sunfish registers with the agents for those events, for those resources, where it has clients that want to know specific things. And then Sunfish sends Redfish and Swordfish API calls back to the agents to query the latest status and health or configuration of the agent's resources, either because Sunfish wants to, up, wants to know an update or a client has asked for an update and Sunfish wants to get the latest um, to request changes in the state or the configurations. And also, when clients go in and start carving up those physical resources into logical resources, um, then Sunfish has to call back agents and make changes to create or destroy redfish or swordfish objects, which are being used to describe those logical resources. And the goal, of course, is to keep the Sunfish resource tree and all the models current without polling. It needs to be an interrupt-driven interface for any kind of scaling. Now, if you want to build your own implementation of Sunfish and use polling, uh, you're free to do so. But we are trying to architect how to do it with events so that everybody does it the same way if they are using events. So a very brief flow-through description of how these things work in terms of the event-driven communication. So the, the agent issues this event to Sunfish saying, an aggregation source has been discovered, me. And uh, Sunfish will do the proper bookkeeping at the Sunfish layer and then wait. And this is an architectural choice that we're making. It's not going to come back to the agent and say, what you got for me? It's going to wait for the agent to finish doing its inventory and whatever else it needs to do before it's ready to actually answer all the questions about what do I have for you. So the agent will eventually come back with a resource created. And because we are talking about disaggregated resources on a fabric, showing that it comes back with a fabric that's been created. That will, in turn, cause Sunfish to go query the redfish tree of the agent. Tell me everything that you've got in this fabric. So it's a recursive fetch. And this is additional work that the Sunfish team is doing. We're architecting how that's done, writing code to do that. And then if, again, later, if anything changes during runtime, the agent sends events to Sunfish alerting of a change, and Sunfish will respond with a query, tell me what's new about this particular object. So it's, it's straightforward, but it's got to be sort of set up if you want it to be plug and play. So we're going to have a quick demo on doing just that. Um, it comes from Michaela Gazzetti, who is out of IBM in Ireland. And it is, well, he's going to walk you through it, and I'm going to sit in and listen. Let me know if it's loud enough. In this video, we are going to show the registration process performed by Sunfish agents. To enable the management of various fabrics in the data center, Sunfish needs a unified view of all the resources available. To achieve this goal, Sunfish agents, tasked of managing one or more fabrics, inform Sunfish of their presence via the registration process. This allows Sunfish to create a unified view by mapping each agent to the resources under its control. 
For the purpose of the demo, we have two Sunfish agents, simulating the presence of an NVMe over fabric and CXL fabric, respectively. The NVMe over fabric agent also exposes an Ethernet fabric and two network attached drives. The CXL agent exposes a system named CXL system that could be connected to CXL resources over the respective fabric. As a result of the registration process, the object representation provided by each agent will be imported by Sunfish, creating a unified view of all the fabrics. This is a simplified picture where we show only a subset of the entire Redfish tree of each agent. For example, chassis and devices information are not visualized, but they are still part of each agent state. Both Sunfish server and agents expose a REST server endpoint capable of handling Redfish REST requests. This will be used in the demo to inspect the various components. As a first step, we are going to trigger the registration event of the NVMe over fabric agent. While this is performed manually, this task could be implemented by the agent when the fabric reaches a ready state. Once the registration event is received, Sunfish creates an aggregation source object. This object will be used to keep track of the resources controlled by the agent. As a second step, Sunfish inspects and imports each Redfish object related to the fabric. As a result, users will be able to inspect NVMe over fabric resources querying Sunfish directly. The same process will be repeated for the CXL agent. At the reception of the registration event, Sunfish will create a new aggregation source and import the Redfish objects associated or linked to the fabric. Let's now see this process in action. Let's first inspect Sunfish and verify that the current state is empty. This can be done by targeting the Sunfish endpoint, and we can look for instance at the aggregation sources. And we see that no aggregation sources are currently present. The same can be done for systems, fabrics, and storage. The count is zero in all cases, meaning that at this stage, Sunfish is not aware of any of the resources exposed by the agents. But if we look at the NVMe over fabric agent, and this can be done by targeting the related endpoint, we have two fabrics named NVMe over fabric and Ethernet. We can, for instance, inspect NVMe over fabric. Here we see the resources that are part of the Redfish subtree. We have endpoints, endpoint groups, and connections. If we look at the storage resources, we see two EP attached drives. Let's inspect one of them. We see related resources and linked resources that are not part of the fabric Redfish tree, but they are under a different path. For instance, chassis enclosure information. No system is currently exposed by this agent. Let's now trigger the registration of the NVMe over fabric agent. Once this is done, we can go back and inspect the Sunfish again, for instance looking at the aggregation sources. Here we see one aggregation source has been created, and as we have seen in the presentation, this was the first step performed by Sunfish at the reception of the registration event. We can look at the resource and see its content. Beyond the ID, important entries are hostname, that is the endpoint used to query the agent, and resource assessed, that is the list of all the resources under the control of the agent. We see NVMe over fabric, Ethernet, and for instance, chassis that we have seen before were linked resources. If we search for the storage, we see that we also have the EP attached drives. 
Let's now see if these resources have been imported in Sunfish. Before we looked at the fabric endpoints and we have seen that the count was zero. Now the count is two. And the resources are the same as the one exposed by the NVMe over fabric agent. If we inspect the fabric, we see that the content is the same. Looking at the storage, we see the same resources exposed by the agent. Not only the name, but also the actual resource state has been imported by Sunfish. Let's now move to the CXL agent. Let's first look at the fabrics. We can do this by switching endpoint and targeting the one associated to the CXL agent. And we see one single fabric named CXL. In this case, we have information like switches, connection, endpoints, and so on. Looking at the system, we see one single system. Inspecting it, this contains information like memory summary, processors, and related PCI devices. Similar as before, we have linked resources to the chassis. Regarding the storage, no resources are exposed by this agent. As we have done before, let's now trigger the registration of the CXL agent. This should have created a new aggregation source. In fact, we see that the now the count in some fish is two. We can inspect the new aggregation source. In this case, we have a host name that is the endpoint of the CXL agent. And as resource assessed, we have the list of fabric related objects exposed by the CSL agent. Let's look at the fabrics. And now we see that the count is 3. Inspecting the CXL fabric, we see that we have the same view exposed by the related agent. Let's now look at systems. Now we have one new system, and this can be inspected querying Sunfish directly without involving the agent. Inspecting the CXL system, we see that the same information like memory, links, and processor information are currently available. This concludes the demo showcasing the Sunfish agent registration, enabling a unified view of multiple fabric and resources in Sunfish. Okay, so hopefully people could hear it and could actually see. Uh, what we did was ran several swordfish emulators that were mimicking presenting the mock-ups for a CXL fabric, an NVMe over fabric, and a swordfish fabric. And we put all of those emulators online as the agent, because that's all Sunfish needs, is a redfish agent to talk to. Now, if that's all we ever had to do was go out, find a bunch of agents that already speak Redfish and Swordfish, and throw all of their inventory into one bigger inventory, you know, we'd be done. Um, <laughs> nothing is ever that simple. So what happens when you get into something that isn't that simple? So if we started with the idea that we have a box of drives and we are going to attach them to a couple of hosts and we just physically do that. I can have one enclosure manager, it could be speaking redfish or speak, speaking swordfish or some, some custom thing and I would be done. 
I can dictate to the enclosure manager that host one gets a couple of those drives from a couple of those switches. But it gets immediately more difficult if we're gonna talk about disaggregating fabrics. Now I have several hosts. I have one storage box. Maybe I have multiple storage box. Maybe they are different types of storage boxes. And I might have multiple fabrics, but this example is just a trivial example. The minute I put my storage media on the other side of a switched fabric, and I'm gonna use CXL switched fabric so that you can mentally extend the problem to what happens when I have fabric attached memory devices or, or GPUs or other accelerators. It might be just fine and dandy to have that enclosure out there and attach to your CXL fabric and have that enclosure with its swordfish manager already there, ready to play with. But now you have a fabric manager for managing that CXL fabric. And I show it as one switch, but it might be several. So you go from having a self-contained problem with one manager to multiple managers, multiple fabrics, and you don't want to throw away all the work you did to have that enclosure manager speaking swordfish. How do you get a whole bunch of different redfish and swordfish and other APIs coordinated so that you can have one interface for your clients. And that's what Sunfish is trying to solve, and we're just now beginning to get to the hard problems. <laughs> so what is the hard problem here? We have our CXL fabric manager. We have our Swordfish appliance manager. And if that were all I had to deal with, we would be probably OK. but. The way these fabrics work, you have overlap in what the managers are modeling for you. So this is just one of the problems that disaggregated fabrics and aggregating disaggregated managers brings to the table. So if you're the fabric manager, you understand that fabric switch you know you're building a fabric, you know you have that switch, you know that on the other side of that switch, you have hosts. You don't know anything about the hosts, but you know they're there because you recognize the fabric adapters that are sitting connecting those hosts to your fabric. So you have to put together a Redfish model of that Fine, you do, you put in your endpoints, you build your model, but you're not done because you also see connected to your fabric switch a set of switches that you don't manage, that don't belong to you. And every fabric's different, but in the CXL fabric, your fabric manager for that fabric switch will go out and it will explore what's connected to the ports of its switch and it's going to discover ports for another switch. In fact, it's going to discover ports for two switches, neither of which it owns. To put it into a Redfish model, it's going to create basically a dummy or a placeholder chassis and it's going to create a dummy or placeholder switches. It knows details about the ports because that's part of the CXL fabric spec. That's something that we had a lot to deal with, had a lot to do with when we were working through the CXL spec. How much information about that peer product or peer component on the other side of that link do you have to know so that your manager can make sense out of it? You have the same problem 
for the enclosure manager, right? It understands those two switches inside the enclosure. It understands the ports. It understands the drives. It understands storage. It's going to build a swordfish model, and it's going to make it as complete as it needs to, and it knows everything about it. And if you give it the right requests, it will configure the drives, it will configure the storage. It'll do everything from that interface. What it can't do is do anything about that switch that it's connected to. It knows the switch is there because it's a CXL fabric, it knows that switch is there. Other fabrics, we gotta work through how to do that. So I have a switch. I'm going to attach it out there. It's attached to a fabric because I don't know anything else. But because I'm assuming it's a fabric and I'm going to map my drives to endpoints on that fabric because that's how I represent what I control to the outside world. I can do all this in Swordfish, and I don't have to change any of it. But when I try to register this stuff with Sunfish, Sunfish sees both models, and it has to recognize that the red circle components are the same component. And it has to recognize that the green circle components, hopefully you can see those circles, I should have made them thicker. The green circled and the red circled components are the same components. In two different redfish trees, they have potentially two different redfish IDs. The outside world, your clients, sunfish, they want to see one redfish tree, one set of, if, if these things are all on the same fabric, they want to see one fabric collection, one fabric underneath the collection, and the same name. They don't want to deal with the things that the, that the managers have to deal with. So Sunfish inherits the job of merging those two fabrics. Those two fabrics are, or those two resource trees have those boundary components connected by boundary links. The red highlighted links are the boundary links. Sunfish has to have a mechanism for each and every fabric to detect what are essentially the boundary links and detect that the highlighted link that's flashing at you, that highlighted link is the same link and it reports the same ID for the switch that sources the link and syncs the link. Both sides of that link have the same ID. That's something that we got put into the CXL spec. That's something that came from the Gen Z spec because they have the same problem. Every fabric has this problem. How to determine that you've got dual representation of components and where are your boundary components, where are your boundary links? So, Sunfish has to solve this problem and it will. And you'll end up with one fabric. It'll have a different name probably than either of the agents that presented the duplicate representation. It will have one name for the fabric switch. It will have one name for each of the enclosure switches. And it will have one name, one ID, and one path to follow for the endpoints. So all of those duplications have to be resolved. Sunfish and the Sunfish team, that's what we're doing. And we don't have that working yet, but we know how we're going to do it for CXL. We've got to figure out how we're going to do it for other fabrics. 
most other fabrics have already thought of these problems, so hopefully we will um, be able to come up with them. But our job is to define what the agents have to present in the models so that Sunfish can do this re resolution. So where are we with Sunfish? Well, we're still walking through common use cases and tasks. Everything from how does the Sunfish service and the agent service find each other and start up? Thank you. Um, what do the client discovery of resources via Sunfish inquiries need to look like? In other words, if you want to write a routine that traverses the Sunfish tree, looking for all the fabric attached memory or all of the storage, how many different ways are there that are acceptable that the agents are going to turn into Sunfish? So, there might be 15 different ways to describe storage capacity. How many of those are compliant with Sunfish? So when you write something that parses the Sunfish tree, you get the right answer. You don't double count resources. Resources that are allocated versus resources that are free. All of those things are part of what we're trying to Nail down. Binding of resources to consumers, creating connections. Redfish binds hosts to, to memory on a fabric via a redfish connection object. So exactly what is in those connections, how to use them, that's what we're working on. And, and a lot of it is making sure that the redfish object for connection has everything you need, and then how to interpret it. How is Sunfish going to store these things? Soliciting new use cases and tasks, new fabrics and new resources. It, we can't solve the problem if we don't know what the problem is. So if you have something your business needs modeled or managed, come talk to us, come to the meetings. Come give us a use case and a, and a list of features or solutions that, a list of features of the solution for the use case that you would like to see. And then we're generating reference code implementations of these framework components so that you will be able to take a look at a CXL manager and a CXL agent, and what will that look like? So that you can see if you can meet that need or meet those requirements. And of course, we're building reference implementations of some specific agents for some specific fabrics, and there'll be some composability clients and utilities that will show you how to interpret the sunfish tree. So if you want to know how to find all the FAM that's located on a CXL fabric, go look at our reference implementation and then do whatever you need to do to make your clients happy. And then we're working on redfish and swordfish schema wherever we feel there's extensions to be made. Um, fabric attached memory, We've been working hard on that for a year now, um, keeping pace with the CXL um, spec. We had started off with Redfish mapping fabric attached memory the way Gen Z had presented it. CXL is different. And if we have other fabrics that start to represent fabric attached memory, we're gonna need corresponding models. Redfish and Swordfish work hard at getting those models correct. Um, Sunfish is sort of a validation of the greater, um, the greater picture. So we are working on an open fabric management framework to present a single, comprehensive, well-defined view of an entire fabric 
of composable resources from multiple managers. We're collaborating with the DMTF, SNEA, and the CXL Consortium because those are the major standards that are coming. The reference implementations, they're gonna be rolled out over time as we get them done, as we get the standards. You know, CXL, there's some things about CXL that are not released yet, so we can't issue the reference code. And uh, there are some things about the various standards that are not defined yet. So this is an evolving effort. We encourage you to review the Sunfish Project Collateral and join the OFA Sunfish effort, contribute some use cases, solutions, and code examples. You know, participate rather than isolate, okay? <laughs> and um, this is a list of the Sunfish working group members, uh, the working group contacts. If I've got anybody incorrectly stated here, misspelled anybody's name, I apologize. I hope I got it all correct. And then of course, how to reach me if you want to talk more in detail about anything. And that is it. Questions? Anybody still awake? <laughs>